Hello, what happened last night? I was on my couch. What the heck? I mean, I guess we can have a funeral for Dodger fans, but you know, I, I was on my couch. My goodness. It was three nothing. I was about to fall asleep, and then the explosion happened. My goodness, man. Good to see you guys today. Great to have you today. Hey, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Hang out after service. We have Lucha Libre wrestlers. You probably saw that big wrestling rink out there uh, as you walked in. Be a lot of fun. Hang out with some people. Grab some snacks. Uh, it's going to be a good time. We can have fun at church, right? Really? I mean, we can have fun, right? Yeah, absolutely. All righty. Hey, um, one thing. So last month we was our kind of our missions, missions emphasis month. We talked about living beyond ourselves. We introduced you to, to some of our partners, our global partnerships, and one of them was International Network of Hearts. And they rescue boys and girls from human and sex trafficking. And so we're partnering with them. And we kind of set a goal because in, in, in the girls' um, in the girls' home, there's literally like 16 girls that used one shower. Like they they only had one shower, so obviously you can imagine, you know, how long it would take for everybody to shower. And they had other bathrooms in there, but the showers were not operational. And they had a lot of other stuff that needed to be fixed in the restrooms and the homes, some privacy screening around, as well as some things at the boys' home. And uh, Amy, kind of, we set a goal last month, hey, let's raise $4,000 and get all this stuff taken care of for them. And we raised $6,000. So thank you guys so much. So they're going to have three showers now. And I know we have a team that's going to go down there and do that stuff. And so you can, Amy will be outside. You can sign up outside if you want to go help us. But it's so incredible. I'm so proud of you guys. Very, very grateful. So we're able to do some really cool work um, fixing up those homes a little bit for the boys and for the girls. Amy was nervous about being able to get volunteers for our missions team. And we have over 60 volunteers signed up for our missions team. So, yes, that's amazing. So thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, one more thing. I want to encourage you to turn in your prayer cards. So when you walked in today, you received a little piece of paper that says prayer needs or prayer requests. So we have been accumulating those for the last couple weeks. And next Sunday, when we focus on the O and tacos on praying for others, we're going to redistribute those. And so if you have a prayer need or a prayer request, you can write your name on it or you can just keep it anonymous. Place those in the black offering box as you leave. That way we can re redistribute those next week and be praying for the needs um, of each other. So we're in a series right now entitled Tacos. And what we're really talking about for the entire month is prayer and the importance of prayer. And we're trying to encourage everybody to pray. A lot of times we don't pray because we think, well, if I can't pray for an hour, then it's really not a prayer that God hears. And yet that's not true. The vast majority of prayers in the Bible are 30 seconds or less. And so we can all pray. And God wants us to pray. And we're looking at Matthew chapter 6. The disciples came to Jesus and they, he said, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And then Jesus gave them this model or this template for prayer. And I thought it would be good if each week as we start the message that we say the Lord's Prayer together. So it'll be up on the screen, so let me hear you. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So this is that model prayer, this template. Because a lot of times we don't pray because we don't know what to pray for. Or because we get tired of praying the same things over and over. And so we kind of came up with this, with, with, with this model that we're calling tacos. And it just is a helpful reminder of things to pray for. The T stands for thanksgiving. We're to be grateful. We're to be thankful. The A stands for adoration. We talked about that last week. Today, the C stands for confession. We're going to talk about that this morning. And then next week, we're going to look at the O, which is we're to pray for others. And then the S stands for self. We're also to pray for the needs that we have um, in our lives. Today, the focus is confession. Now, 
I know this can be a sensitive topic for us because when we talk about confessing or the need to confess, we get a little self-conscious. We kind of cringe inside a little bit because it means that maybe we have something that we actually need to confess. And a lot of times that's difficult for us because it forces us to acknowledge the fact that we're not perfect, that maybe we do make mistakes, maybe we do sin, and that's hard for us. But confession is important. Confession is really important. The Bible encourages us to confess our sins. We just read in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. So we're going to talk about both. We're going to talk about receiving forgiveness and also offering forgiveness. The Bible makes it clear that we have the ability to go straight to God with our sin or with our confession. We don't need, a, we, we don't need another person to forgive us on God's behalf. The Bible tells us to go boldly to the throne of grace. We can go straight to him with our needs. Now, confession to other people is good. It's healthy, but that doesn't bring forgiveness of sin. That might bring healing to our conscience and healing to our souls, and it also helps us develop accountability. The Bible tells us to confess our sins to one another, that you may be healed. So it's helpful, and it can be helpful to have somebody in your life that you can open up to, that you can be yourself, that you can be honest with. That can be really healing, and that can be very helpful. But we can't forgive each other's sin, right? Only God can do that. And so when it comes to that, we're to come before him. And if you think about it, this whole confession thing, even though it kind of makes us a little self-conscious and, and, and we have a hard time with it sometimes, think about this. Confession is a gift. It really is. We should be thankful for confession. The fact that I can violate a holy, perfect God and receive a second chance and a third chance and a 70 times seven, right? The ability to be forgiven, to have a fresh start is a gift. It's such a blessing. It is such a blessing because for many of us, you cross somebody one time and you're written off for good. But God is not like that. God, we make mistakes, we mess up. The Bible tells us that he's willing to forgive. He says 70 times seven. And the idea is that he just forgives and he forgives and he forgives. And that's something we should be thankful for. That is a huge blessing that we can come before God and receive forgiveness. So a couple of things that are in your notes. By the way, if you haven't downloaded our New Hope Eastlake app, you can, I would encourage you to do that. Pull up the app. It'll, it has the Bible in there. We're gonna be reading for some stuff in a little bit. And it also um, has the notes in which you can follow along. So a couple things to consider concerning forgiveness. The first thing is this. There's a difference between confession and repentance. There's a difference between confession and and repentance. Confession just means that we agree with God, that we just, we're in agreement. So we're confessing what we usually typically already know is right or wrong, whatever it might be. We agree with God. Repentance means to change our minds. Repentance literally means to do a 180. You see, it's important that if we're going to confess that there's an acknowledgement of our sin. First John tells us this, it's in your notes, that if we say that we don't have sin or we say, oh, you know, I'm perfect, I don't sin, I don't really believe in sin, I don't believe in all of that. Well, the Bible tells us that if we say that we have no sin, that the truth is not in us because we all sin. You see, confession by itself is not repentance. Confession moves the lips, but, con but repentance moves the heart. You see, naming an act as sin before God is not the same as leaving it. You can confess something and really not mean it in your heart or have no, um, really no uh, intent on changing. So that's not, confession is not the same as actual repentance. 
You see, though our confession might be honest and it might be emotional and it might be heartfelt, unless it expresses true change of heart, then confession by itself is not repentance. So let's get on the same page when it comes to the word sin because I know we get, you know, we're like, oh, we don't like that word. The fact, you know, sin, that's, I mean, does that mean that I'm a bad person? Does that mean that like God is, is like embarrassed of me? Of like, like, can I even, like, I, I sin, I sin, that's a horrible, horrible thing. And, and, and that's just not simply the case. The word sin is an archery term. And it just simply means to miss the mark. That what, that's exactly what it means. It means to miss the mark. It means this, that none of us hit the bullseye all the time. Every one of us in this room have missed the mark. We try, we aim for the bullseye, but we don't always hit it. The fact that we sin, it just means one thing. It means that we're human. And it means that we're all in this together. All of us have made mistakes. We've all missed the mark. The Bible says there's not one of us that's righteous, not one. All of us miss the mark. And many of us have, have put the 70 times seven to the test, right? Are you with me? But you see, the ability to be forgiven is a blessing. We've all missed the mark. We've all made mistakes. And many times we think, oftentimes, we think, well, you know, God is tired of me confessing the same thing over and over again. No, he's not. He's not. Because most of the time, with most of us, it's not an entire gauntlet of 50 million sins that we struggle with. It's usually a couple of things, one or two things that are kind of besetting or reoccurring things that we struggle with. And you see, it just means that we, in parts of our life, we miss the mark. And it's okay, because we're all in the same boat. However, the Bible does make it clear that we're not to take advantage of the grace of God. Matter of fact, Romans chapter 6 tells us, because Paul was dealing with this issue of people saying, well, you know what, the more I sin, the more God's grace is exemplified in my life, so I should keep sinning because I'm, I'm just a testimony of God's grace. And Paul says, no, 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 no. Paul says God is forgiving and he will forgive, but he says, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more wonderful grace? He says, of course not. Since we've died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? You see, if I bring you up on stage and I smack you over the head, which I wouldn't do, and I said, I'm sorry, and then I smacked you again, and I said, I'm sorry, and then I smacked you again, and I said, I'm sorry. Like, do you believe me? <laughs> you don't believe me, right? And so the idea, God knows our heart. And so the idea is this. You know what? I'm going to do this, and then tomorrow I'll ask for forgiveness. <laughs> right? We do that. And yet, God's word cautions against that. But God knows our heart. And so you might ask, does that mean that God can't forgive the same sin more than one time? Of course he can of course he can. Like, like God, God's forgiveness is not limited by our inability to hit the mark. That's why he's God and we're not. That's why he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, on the cross to die for our sins is because we all miss the mark, every one of us. Number two, the second important thing about, about forgiveness is this, is if, if we are forgiven, the Bible encourages us to forget, forgive others as well. It says, as we forgive our debtors. It, it's like a continuous, right? Forgive us of our debts as we, in other words, they're, they're like married together. We receive forgiveness as we forgive others as well. If you read on past the Lord's Prayer in verses 14 and 15 in, in Matthew 6, it says, if we forgive, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. And so forgiving other people is really important because think about that, okay? I make mistakes, I miss the mark, and a holy, perfect God forgives me. Who am I to not forgive a violation against me when I'm in the same boat as you are. You see, we forgive each other. You see, if we miss the mark sometimes, others are gonna miss the mark as well. And if God gives us grace and mercy, God certainly wants us to extend that to other people as well. 
As a matter of fact, Jesus even taught an entire parable about this principle called the parable of the debtor. Ephesians 4.32, it's in your notes. It says, instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ Jesus, has forgiven you. Those are oftentimes married in the scriptures. When we hear about forgiving other people, we oftentimes are reminded that God has forgiven us. And notice in this verse as well, in Ephesians, it's in the present tense. It's, it's, it's forgiving. It's a constant thing, because a lot of us need to be forgiven often. We hurt each other. We do things that, that we shouldn't do. We say things we shouldn't say to each other, which means we need to have grace with each other in other people's, um, in the lives of other people, forgiving. It's a continuous thing. As we forgive our debtors, forgiving other people. You see, forgiveness at its core means to cancel a debt, or it's a canceling of a debt. And what we're doing when we forgive other people is we're releasing them to God. It's not my job to pay them back. It's not my job to get over on them. It's my job to give it to God. Because if God can forgive us, then we should be willing to forgive others. Now listen, forgiving others does not mean that we have to trust them again. You get that, right? You can forgive somebody without being their best friend again. You can release them to the Lord and give that violation or that debt to the Lord without, without them continuing to be a big part of your life. Like that doesn't have to happen depending on what the violation is. There may be a time where reconciliation needs to happen, but sometimes the violation is so great that it brings so much pain as there's been so much damage done, it's really impossible to repair the relationship, but that doesn't mean that you hold on to that anger and that hate and that resentment towards them. You can release them to God. Charles Spurgeon, an old time preacher, said this, to be forgiven is such sweetness that honey is tasteless in comparison with it. But there is one thing that is sweeter still, and that is to forgive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And so to forgive rises a stage higher in experience than to be forgiven. Turn to Psalm chapter 51. Psalms chapter 51. Let me set the stage for you a little bit. We have an incredible example of confession. Now, David, you guys know David, King David, greatest king in the history of Israel. He definitely was not perfect. He was far from it. Matter of fact, I think a lot of the reasons we love David so much is because we see so much of ourselves in him. David is known as, as a God, as a man after God's own heart. And yet David made a series, not just a one-time mistake, David made a series of mistakes. And one mistake compounded itself into another one, and a bigger one, and another one, and another one. And really it impacted David's entire life. It really did. But you know the story. David committed a major sin. He basically took somebody else's wife for himself. She got pregnant, and then to get himself out of the mess, he basically had her husband killed. You should read the Bible. There's a lot of stuff in there. That started a series of events in David's life that physically, there was a lot of stuff that happened in his family that really he'd never recover from. But spiritually, he did. Because we read that he was a man after God's own heart. And the difference between David and a lot of people was David messed up in massive ways. But he also repented in massive ways as well. He took accountability for his actions. And he allowed God to restore him. And David ends up becoming the greatest king in the history of Israel, even after this major major sin. So let's read in, in verse one. We're, we're going to read most of the chapter. Just listen to David's heart. He says, have mercy on me, O God. And this is David's confession before the Lord for that specific series of sins. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. 
because of your great compassion. Notice the, the trust that, God, that David has in God, the trust in God's forgiveness and his mercy. Blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin, for I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. For against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight, and you will be proved right in what you say. That's that confession, agreeing with God. And your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Give me back my joy again. You have broken me, now let me rejoice. Don't look, don't keep looking at my sins, but remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and do not remove your spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and make me willing to obey that I will teach your ways to rebels and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O oh God who saves, then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness and seal my lips, O oh Lord, that my mouth may praise you. And he goes on and he says, you do not desire a sacrifice or I would give one. What you want is a broken and contrite spirit and a repentant heart, O oh God. David's confession is an incredible example for all of us because we're all gonna make mistakes. But the question is this, do we repent? Are we willing to go before the Lord and say, God, forgive me? Please don't underestimate how important this is. There's a couple things that are in your notes that we're gonna wrap up this morning with. And the first one is this, is that David takes personal responsibility for his choices. Notice all the times that David says, me, me. And I, as a matter of fact, 11 times in five verses, David says me or I. You see, he doesn't blame his parents. He doesn't blame Bathsheba. He owns it himself. There's something mature and powerful when you're willing to look yourself in the mirror and saying, you know what? I blew it. That's a sign of spiritual maturity. That's a sign of health. Not that you sin, we say if we sin, we're immature. No, it means we're human. When we cover up our sin and when we won't acknowledge it and when we won't own our sin, that's immaturity. That's lack of growth. When we mess up, which all of us are going to and we will, but when we can look in the mirror and when we can come before God and just own it and say, God, I take responsibility for my sin. I messed up. I missed the mark. Matter of fact, I missed the entire stinking target. I acknowledge that before you. That is a sign of a healthy Christian. That is a sign of somebody that's growing. A sign of somebody that has a heart after God. That's a good sign. That's a healthy sign. And we see this in David's life 11 times in five verses. Me, I, I admit, I own my mistakes. And we live in a culture where we want to blame everybody but ourselves. Parents blame teachers. Kids blame their parents. We blame everything on the pandemic. We blame the government. We point the finger at everybody else except ourselves. David, in verses three and four, he recognizes his sin. He acknowledges his sin. In verse four, David accepts the consequences of his sin. He just mans up and he says, you know what? Whatever you got for me, God, I'm willing to take because I own my mistakes. Having a victim mentality will not solve anything in our lives. If you own your story, then you get to write the ending. But if you're a victim, you allow somebody else to write your ending. Listen, you cannot heal what you won't reveal. Better yet, God cannot heal what you conceal. Because when we're willing 
to reveal things before the Lord, which he knows anyways. <laughs> so we might as well just confess it and go before him. It's a gift. It's a blessing. And if we want healing, it begins with revealing. Number two, the second lesson we learn from David's confession is that David trusts in God's mercy and grace. This is beautiful. Even in verses one and two, David has hope that despite David's sin, despite his choices, he believes and trusts in God's mercy and God's grace. See, this is an important lesson for us because we are never, listen, we are never too far gone God is never finished with us. There is not a hole deep enough that God cannot clinch us and grab us and pull us out of. That is the God that we serve. No matter what we've done, no matter what the violation is, no matter if we are aiming for a completely different target, it doesn't matter. We miss the mark. We have a God that loves us, that cares about us, that wants to redeem us, that wants to justify us, justify, had never sinned. He wants to forgive us. That's the God that we serve. That's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross so that we can be forgiven. You see, David does not allow his sin to defeat him. He didn't quit. He didn't give up. He takes personal responsibility for his sin. He accepts the consequences. He gives it to God. He learns from his mistakes, and then he moves on. He recalibrates. He sets aim again, and he tries again. And David ends up being the greatest king in the history of Israel. Did he make more mistakes? Yes. Of course he did. But God is faithful, and God forgives and God gives us second chances. When we confess and we repent, God forgives. And any self-talk that God has not forgiven you or any self-talk of condemnation, that is not from God. That is from your spiritual enemy who is the accuser of the brethren and who wants to keep you in your sin. You see, because God forgives. Failing is a bruise, it's not a tattoo. Failing is growth. Failure is quit. We don't drown by falling in the water. You drown by staying there. <laughs> David knows that we have a loving and forgiving God. What a gift. The Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 9 that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us because that's who he is. Just means that's, that's his character. That's who he is to forgive us of our sins, but not only does he forgive us, but it says that he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that incredible? We can be forgiven, but we can also have a fresh, brand new start. Isaiah 118 says, though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Though they're red like crimson, I will make them as white as wool. It's been said that the only sin that God cannot forgive is the sin that we're unwilling to confess. Confession. It's good for the soul. Forgive us of our debts as we forgive those or as we forgive our debtors. So let me ask you this. When is the last time you've ever done this? When is the last time you've been honest and open before God and you just said, God, I've been struggling with this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be this. This is not me. And you just give it to him. When's the last time you've ever done that? That is a sign of a healthy spiritual life. That doesn't mean you're not a good person. It doesn't mean that, that, no, it means that you're healthy. It means that you're growing spiritually when we can acknowledge our sin. So last week, we asked you to, we all got on our knees in adoration to the Lord. It was an incredible moment. Today, I wanna ask you to do something that maybe you haven't done in a long time. And that is confess. Not to me, not to each other, but to the Lord. On the back table right behind you, there are a bunch of blue pieces of paper and there's a pen. And we're gonna start a song here in just a minute. 
And if you are willing, you don't have to. Obviously, I'm, I'm just inviting you to if you would like. You don't have to do it. But I want you to write down something on that piece of paper. Maybe it's a, a secret thing that only you know about. Maybe it's something that you're struggling with. Maybe it's a person that you need to forgive. What I want you to do is I want you to write on that piece of paper. And then we have shredders up here at the front. And this is what we're gonna do. Listen, these shredders are a symbol of God's forgiveness. He wipes the slate clean and we're not gonna put them all and glue them all together. You don't have to put your name on it. We're throwing it away. It's a symbol of God's grace and forgiveness. I'm gonna be the first one. Well, I'm not gonna show you. They'll <laughs> screenshot it on the camera. <laughs> I've got mine right here. I'm gonna be the first one down these stairs. And so I wanna invite you to do that. You don't have to do it, but it can be good for you. It can be healthy. And maybe it can be the beginning of a fresh start for you. Father, I just pray for each person here today. As we have fun today outside and have a good time, Lord, I pray for each person here today. There may be some people that have just been struggling with some things. Maybe there's a person that they know that they need to forgive, but it's hard. God, I pray that we'll just be honest with you this morning. Maybe today can be a fresh start for somebody. Maybe today somebody can have a victory that they haven't had in a long time. We give you this today, trusting in your grace, your mercy, and your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, thank you so much for tuning in to New Hope this week. You know, the church doesn't stop when the video does. And make sure that you share this with a friend. You can even support what we're doing via the Give button here on the left. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a single Sunday. And we cannot wait to see you this week, either in person or online. Have a great day.